and welcome to Hegarty Maths. It's Mr. Arnold here and in this video we're going to take a look at coordinate geometry of the circle. This is aimed at A-level maths but is applicable to most other maths modules. Okay, so uh, this is all about the coordinate geometry of the circle and in order to understand uh, coordinate geometry of a circle we need to understand what are the two most important features of a circle when we're talking about its coordinate geometry. So suppose we have some circle C uh, the first thing I would like to know about a circle is where does it originate from? In other words, what is the center of the circle? So the center of the circle, which I'll call for now HK, is a really important part. Now we'll come across this idea of HK in another video. H and K are just some numbers. Uh, so the, the center of the circle is very important, but also is the size of its radius. So if I can the size of the radius defines how big the circle it is and the center of the circle decides where the circle originates from. So these are the two important features of a circle. Now suppose we have a circle uh, in our Cartesian plane, the xy axis, and we wanted to find, suppose, its center. Well if I knew two points in the circle, let's call them A and B, and if I knew that those two points A and B form the diameter of a circle, like so, we could calculate its centre by working out the midpoint of that diameter. So if I work out the midpoint of the line AB, uh, as long as A and B form a diameter, then we can calculate the centre. So how do we find the centre of, or the midpoint of a line? Well, if I call uh, A the point x1, y1, and the point B x2, y2, the centre of that line, or the midpoint of that line, is simply um, x1 plus x2 divided by 2. So if I add the x ordinates together and half them, add the y ordinates together and half them, we get the midpoint. So adding the x ordinates together, divide by 2, adding the y ordinates together and dividing by 2, that will give me the centre. Okay, so let's have a quick look at an example here. AB is the diameter of a circle. A is the point 2, 5. B is the point 6, 11. Find the centre of the circle. I'm going to label this X1, Y1. And this will be X2, Y2. So that means the centre will be found by doing X1 plus X2. 2 plus 6 divided by 2, and y1 plus y2, 5 plus 11, divided by 2, 2 and 6 is 8, 8 divided by 2 is 4, 5 and 11 is 16, 16 divided by 2 is 8. So the centre of our circle is the point for 8. Okay, let's have a look at a slightly more involved example. Uh, PQ is the diameter of a circle with a centre 2, negative 2. P is the point 8, negative 5. Find the coordinates of Q. So let's call Q the point, uh, well, let's call it x2, y2. So I know that 8, 8, plus x1 over 2, sorry, 8 plus x2 over 2 is going to give me 2. Because the midpoint, or the, the mid ordinate for the x, x's is 2. And I know that um, negative 5 plus y2 over 2 will give me negative 2. So I need to solve these two little equations. I'm going to remove these brackets because we don't actually need them. Um, the midpoint of these is 2, negative 2. So let's solve these two equations. Implies, so 8 plus x2 equals 4, which implies that x2 
must equal 4 take away 8, and 4 take away 8 is negative 4. Similar idea going on here. Uh, I'm going to times both sides by 2, so we get negative 5 plus y2 equals negative 4. And then adding 5 to both sides, we get y2 equals 1. So coordinates of q, negative 4, 1. Kind of using the, the formula um, backwards. Okay, so that's uh, the basics of finding the midpoint. Now, suppose we have a circle. Suppose we have a circle C, um, and we know two points on the circle, uh, these two points here, and they form a chord. Well, if I find the perpendicular bisector of that chord, so if I find a perpendicular bisector of this chord, it passes through the center of the circle. Now this is a, a th circle theorem from GCSE. It's an important feature that we're about to use. So if I if I have a chord and I bisect that chord, so I come along and I, I cut that chord in half, I know that this line must pass through the center of the circle. Now if I have two perpendicular bisectors, so if I find this perpendicular bisector and this perpendicular bisector, and if I was to work out the equation of both of those lines, of the purple line, let's call this, this purple line here I'll call L1, and if I call this, this long green line here, L2, and if I work out the point of intersection between these two equations, it's, it must be the center of the circle. So let's try and put this idea into practice. PQ is a chord of the circle with center negative 3, 5, where P and Q are 5, 4 and 1, 2 respectively. The line L is perpendicular to PQ and bisects it. Show that L passes through the center of the circle. Okay, so this is quite a bit of information to take on. And um, what I'd like to do before I start this is maybe do a little sketch of what I think is going on. So we got um, PQ is a chord, the center of the circle is negative 3, 5, okay, um, PQ is a chord, so P and Q are 5, 4 and 1, 12, so 5, 4 could be, well, it's got to be somewhere over here, 5, 4, 1, 12, something like that, so 5, 4 and 1, 12, it says L is perpendicular to PQ and bisects it. Okay, so PQ is this line here. That's PQ. PQ. And we've got this line L, which is perpendicular to PQ and bisects it. So we've got some line. L. And we want to see, does L pass through that center C? Okay, I'm going to need the equation of the line L. Ultimately, I want the equation of L. And then I'm going to see if uh, the point negative 3, 5 sits on the equation of that line. If it is, it must pass through the center. So I'm going to need the equation of L. Now, I don't have enough information yet, but in order to get the equation of L, I'm going to need, I'm going to need this point here. So I'm going to need a point on L, and I'm going to need its gradient. And then we can use y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So let's go for working out the equation of L. First thing I'm going to do is work out the gradient of PQ. The gradient of PQ. Because it's perpendicular, we're going to be able to use a property that we should know from C1. So let's start by getting the gradient of PQ. That's going to equal um, y2 minus y1. So 4 minus 12 
over x2 minus x1, 5 minus 1, which is going to equal negative 8 over 4, which equals negative 2. So the gradient of PQ is negative 2, which implies that the gradient of L must equal the negative reciprocal of this. Because it's perpendicular, it must be the negative reciprocal. So I'm going to flip it and change the sign, which means the gradient of L is a half. Okay, lovely. So I've got the gradient of L. I would also like a point on L. I need a point on L other than the center, because that's what we're going to check for. So to get a point on L, point on L equals the midpoint of PQ. So just going back up. So if I get the midpoint of PQ, because it's the perpendicular bisector, the midpoint will give me a point on L. So the midpoint of PQ gives me a point on L. So let's get the midpoint. Uh, 1 plus 5 over 2. 1 plus 5 over 2. So adding the x-ordinates together and then dividing by 2. I'm going to add the y-ordinates, so 12 plus 4 over 2. 12 plus 4 over 2, which is going to give me 6 over 2, which is 3. And we get 16 over 2, which is 8. So I've got a point on L, and I've got the gradient of L. So we're going to use y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Okay, so y minus 8 equals a half times x minus 3. So y. In fact, let's multiply everything by 2. Multiply everything by 2, so we get 2y minus 16 equals x minus 3. So we get x minus 2y, uh, adding 3 to both sides, minus 13 equals 0. Okay, so we got the equation of L. So now I want to see if the center I want to see if the center which is this negative 3 5 is it on L so if negative 3 negative 3 5 so this is the line L so I want to know is negative 3 5 on the line is it an element of L is it part of L What I'm going to see is I'm going to substitute the point into the line. So, x is going to be negative 3. Negative 3 minus 2 times 5 minus 13. Is that equal to 0? So we get negative 3 minus 10 minus 13, is that equal to 0? So we get minus 26 is equal to 0. Just a quick check of what I've been doing here. I can see I made a little mistake. That shouldn't be minus. That should be a plus, which changes up a few things. That will be plus. That will be plus, which means that the answer is 0 equals 0, therefore, um, therefore L passes through the center. Okay, so one more example to do before we wrap up. 
So I've got AB and CD are chords of a circle. And the line y equals 3x minus 11 is the perpendicular bisector of AB. So the perpendicular bisector of AB. And this line is the perpendicular bisector of CD. Find the coordinates of the centre of the circle. Well, we're kind of lucky here. Because we've actually been given the equation of the perpendicular bisectors. So we've got some circle. Um, 3x minus 11 and maybe something like that and then we've got minus x minus 1 could be something like that so and if I find the point of intersection between these two lines I will get the center of the circle so that's y equals 3x minus 11 and this is y equals minus x minus 1. So all I'm going to do is just solve a simultaneous equation. And because they're both written in the form y equals, I'm just going to do this by substitution. So let 3x minus 11 equal negative x subtract 1. Let's solve for x. I'm going to add x to both sides. I'm also going to add 11 to both sides. So 4x equals 10, which means that the x-ordinate equals uh, 10 over 4, which is 5 over 2. Let's substitute that back in. So I'm going to sub it into either equation. Sub x equal to 5 over 2 into into y equals negative x minus 1. So substituting it in, we get y equals negative 5 over 2 minus 1, which means y must equal negative 7 over 2. So the center of the circle is 5 over 2 minus 7 over 2. Job done. Now we may have questions where we don't have the equation, but we've, get, we've got the two chords. You need to work out the equation of both perpendicular bisectors and work out where they intersect each other and you'll have the answer. That's it for this video. Hopefully you found it useful. I'll be back again with a new one soon. All the best.